morning, good morning, good morning. A glorious and awesome and sunny and beautiful day it is this morning. And this morning, I was reminded about how wonderful and powerful and essential the Word of God is. You know, you've seen words used in, in lots of movies and stuff. And I'm not saying the Word of God is, is as fantasticized, like, fake magic as these movies, but I think a lot of these stories, you know, you've got the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, where Aslan created the world with singing, and you've got Dune with the words, and they had something I think called Inkheart or something years ago, where the guy would speak and things would come to pass, and I think a lot of those pulled from the Bible, pulled from the truth that the spiritual world is, where God's word is powerful. It is life, it is health, there's all sorts of things about the word. And I want to remind you and put words, the word of God for you, that builds faith. Because faith comes by hearing, right? And hearing by the word of God. The word is a faith builder. In Psalm 119.11, David said, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So we take that word and we keep putting it in us. We put it in our heart. Hide it in our heart. So it is a, uh, not hide like, oh no, it's it's never going to come out, but hide it like it's a treasure. We constantly are filled up with the treasure of his word. And then in Psalm 119, 105, he said, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Jeremiah 23, 29, Is not my word like as a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? If you have a hard place you're getting through, <clears throat> pardon me again, and you need it broken down, things in the spirit, things, even obstacles in the natural, his word is like a hammer that breaks hard things into pieces, breaks the rock. Talk about stony ground. Well, there's a word, the word that breaks the rock in pieces. John 6, 30, 6 63, Jesus said, it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you are spirit and and they are life. His words are spirit and life. And Mark 4, he said, the sower sows the word. So the word is a seed, right? And in John, in John chapter 1 and chapter 6, putting it together, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And then it says that he became manifest as flesh, and Jesus himself said, I am the bread of life. And he said, my flesh is food indeed, or meat indeed. So the word is food, it is bread, it is life-giving food for us. In Ephesians 6, 17, he said to take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So his word is a sword. So the word out of these ones is light. God's word is fire, it's a hammer. It is spirit, it is life, it's seed, it's bread, it's a sword. And that's just some of them. His word is like the ultimate Swiss army knife. It is multi-purposed, multi-faceted. What God says can bring about multiple things. His word is awesome. <laughs> I can't think of a word. We don't have a word for that word that just says it's everything. It's everything to us, right? But then in Colossians 3.16, we're told to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. Like I said before, it's like treasures you pack inside of us. You, you treasure that word, not you hoard the word. We're giving it out too, but it's dwelling in us richly. Rich, I think rich like a, like a, a dragon's treasure trove, you know, rich, just hordes and hordes of gold, or rich like a chocolate cake, one of those ones that's made out of practically nothing but solid chocolate. And you take a bite and you go, oh, that's about all I can eat. It's the best thing I've eaten, but I can only eat a tiny bit because it's so rich. Dwell in you richly. So you're just full of, of dense, wonderful word of God, just filled with the richness of God. Dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. So it's telling you that word doesn't just sit and hole up inside of you. You teach, you admonish. You share, you encourage one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And it says, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. 
So singing, spending your time singing about the goodness of God is a wonderful way. It is a scriptural way for the word of God to dwell in us richly. Singing scriptural, of course, word-based things, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, the wonderful things God has filled us with that, you know, I'm, I can ramble on on this, but song is a great way to memorize things, right? It's also a great way to get obnoxious things stuck in your head. So it's a good idea to get a hold of songs, hymns, old tunes, even the psalms, even singing out of the scriptures. Every once in a while I've done that where I just take a scripture and I make a little ditty out of it, you know, just sing it to myself. Well, it's dwelling in me richly that way. Let that word of Christ dwell in you richly. And it's pull out that Swiss army knife when the time is right. And now you've got all the tools necessary to bring about good things in your life, in the world, and for the kingdom of God. Amen. Be blessed.